Introducing VR's Self-Advocacy Training Service for School District Staff. Hello and welcome to the Self-Advocacy Training Webinar for School District Staff. This session is designed to educate you about our newest pre-employment transition service available to STAR participants and VR customers. Today, we will be reviewing self-advocacy, discussing the self-advocacy training curriculum, reviewing how the self-advocacy training service works in STAR, and lastly, we'll review the provider's role and responsibilities. Self-advocacy training is a service that has been identified as a pre-employment transition service, pre-ETS, in the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, WIOA. The goal of this service is to prepare individuals to communicate effectively their strengths, abilities, interests, and needs when applying to post-secondary institutions and or interviewing with potential employers. It is being added to the other pre-ETS we already have available. It will be available to STAR participants and VR customers. There are many benefits to possessing self-advocacy skills. It encourages problem solving. It creates a sense of ownership over one's learning and actions. It builds one's self-esteem and confidence. And it helps individuals develop a sense of independence and self-empowerment. This screen captures other positive outcomes from teaching students to speak up for themselves and make good, informed decisions about their own lives. And after all, that is our goal, our mutual goal, to empower and encourage students, our young adults with disabilities, to advocate for themselves, to have that confidence needed when applying to a post-secondary institution and or looking for a job. Let's talk a little about the curriculum. The self-advocacy training services include a product-driven two-course series that may be used for students who require knowledge and skills to speak up for themselves and make decisions that affect their lives. These courses are designed for students to gain self-awareness about their skills, abilities, needs, and interests, and then be able to communicate effectively when applying to post-secondary institutions, such as technical school, college, or even graduate school, and or potential employers. What we mean by product driven is that students are required to produce relevant and meaningful products or in VR terms, deliverables, demonstrating what they learned from the curriculum. Course one, which is 20 hours, addresses self-advocacy skills. It may be used as a standalone program with students exploring their abilities and needs so they can learn how to communicate more effectively. Course two, which is 25 hours, is a continuation of course one that addresses self-determination skills learned that are then applied to a real life setting. There are also extension activities which are used to provide additional time and more intensive support to VR customers who may need it in order to complete the course deliverables, and we'll talk about those deliverables shortly. As a side note, because of the additional supports associated with extension activities, they are only available to VR customers receiving pre-employment transition services. STAR participants are not eligible for extension activities. If it becomes evident that more time and support is required, it will be suggested that the student consider applying to VR where these and other services and supports may be available. Each course will be made up of 10 to 12 students, and as with work readiness training, we are encouraging providers to offer these courses where it is most convenient to the students, such as school, library, community center, boys and girls clubs, YMCA, etc. As with other pre-employment transition services, this service should be offered outside of the academic day where graduation requirements are the main focus. These courses and extension activities will be discussed in more detail in the upcoming slides. Let's talk more about the self-advocacy training curriculum. The curriculum for the two courses is built around a practical, hands-on approach that requires students to be actively engaged in their learning by reflecting, contributing, and producing in order to be successful. In choosing the curriculum components, VR looked at national models and best practices, then assembled a framework that functions much like a teacher's lesson plan. You will notice that the self-advocacy and self-determination resources available through Project 10 are not listed on the curriculum. We wanted to give providers additional resources, additional material to use that will not have already been used in schools. 
We all know that students may not appreciate being asked to do the same things over, so we wanted to offer providers variety in options and students variations in learning. This is a screenshot of the Curriculum Framework for Self-Advocacy Training Course 1. The outline provides the suggested number of hours, curriculum components, delivery methods, curriculum resources, weekly assignments, and course deliverables. The course hours are an estimation. A student may take more or fewer hours for a component based on need. The curriculum components describe the topics providers should cover and students should receive. They range from understanding self-advocacy to developing their own goals for employment. Delivery methods give providers ideas on the best way to communicate the information related to a curriculum component and provides suggestions for completing weekly assignments and course deliverables. We have tried to make it as multi-sensory as possible to accommodate the various learning styles. The curriculum resources are links to materials and other curriculum work that providers may draw from. Again, these are in addition to the resources available through Project 10. Weekly assignments can be as simple as a worksheet or as detailed as an action plan. These assignments provide the material that will be included in the course deliverable. Course deliverables are more comprehensive than weekly assignments and will end up being the product that students can use when applying to college or a job. Course deliverables are the weekly reflection journal entries, self-awareness project portfolio, professional portfolio, and the summative assessment or mock interview. Course deliverables are course specific and have their own requirements that must be met before they can be approved by VR staff. Course 1 requires weekly reflection journal entries. To approve these journals as a completed deliverable, they must contain the date of session, the hours of the session, and what was done. Optionally, the provider may have the student include what was learned and how that learning can be applied. The other deliverable is a self-awareness project portfolio. To be approved as a completed deliverable, only a current resume is needed. The information learned or obtained from all Course 1 components are put together to create the complete resume. The optional content for the project portfolio would include skill evidence, work samples, letters of recommendation, high school diploma, and any licenses or certifications the individual may have attained. It is important to note that VR staff will require either the original weekly reflection journal and a photocopy or clear scan of every completed weekly reflection journal entry. This will allow VR staff to verify the total number of hours individuals have completed in the course. We will also require a photocopy or clear scan of each page in the individual's self-awareness project portfolio. Course 2 also requires weekly reflection journal entries and the acceptance criteria stays the same. The next deliverable is a professional portfolio. This can be considered a continuation, revision, or enhancement to the self-awareness project portfolio. To be accepted as a completed deliverable, an updated resume, skill evidence, and at least one letter of recommendation are needed. The optional content for the portfolio would include a cover letter, work samples, high school diploma, and any licenses or certifications the individual may have obtained. Again, please note that VR staff will require either the original weekly reflection journal or a photocopy or clean scan of every completed weekly reflection journal entry and a photocopy or clear scan of each page in the individual's professional portfolio. The last deliverable is a summative assessment or mock interview. The mock interview is evaluated by a performance rubric to determine student learning throughout both courses. Because the accuracy and quality of the products produced speaks to a student's experience, knowledge, understanding, and performance, our responsibility as VR staff is to review all of the deliverables and approve them or provide guidance on what's needed for improvement and or final approval. The summative assessment, or mock interview, is a critical part of the second course. To conduct the interview, the provider must have two independent evaluators present. This is important for a few reasons. First, the interview will feel more authentic to the student. They will be exposed to people they may not know, which is what typically happens in a real interview. 
Second, the scoring will be more reliable because the independent evaluators will not be biased. Lastly, having an outside perspective, in this case an employer who is not tied to the completion of a benchmark, will more closely reflect the individual's actual performance. VR staff may be invited to participate as well, and it is encouraged, but it is optional. During the interview, the evaluators will score the student on six competencies, first impression, professional appearance, professional portfolio, general attitude, content of answers, and communication skills. There are three possible scores for each competency, which translates as being offered a job. This signifies an individual is proficient in the competency. The next level is a two, which would mean the individual would be considered for a job based on their performance. This signifies that there are areas where improvement would be needed. The last level is a one, in which the individual would not be considered for a job. It is important to note that approval of the summative assessment deliverable is not based on the outcome of the summative assessment scores. It is solely based on the completion of the summative assessment. However, we do hope that the outcome shows that students have gained necessary skills to at least be considered for a job. Although it is the intention of the self-advocacy training to prepare individuals for an interview, additional time and work may be needed to become proficient in each competency. This is where VR staff play a key role in providing guidance on the next steps. Next steps may include the repetition of a course or the entire self-advocacy training series. The screenshot here shows a portion of the rubric. You will see that for each competency, there are skill indicators grouped in each scoring block. There is a possible score which is calculated by the number of skills demonstrated at the proficient level. So, for instance, there are four skills for competency one. If a student demonstrates all four skills in that grouping, they will earn 12 points, three points for each of the four skills. The screenshot highlights competency two. You will see that for this competency, there are three skill indicators grouped in each scoring block. Although we are confident most of you have experience in working with rubrics, let's run through one example to ensure consistency. If, on the professional appearance competency, the student is early for the interview but does not wear appropriate business attire and does not make eye contact at all throughout the entire interview, the student would not be proficient in that competency because there was one skill where he or she earned a three, one skill where a two was earned, and one skill where a one was earned. In this example, the final score would be a six. For the skills in each competency, where a student scored a one, a great deal of work is required. For those skills where a student scored a two, some work is needed. This is the information that providers will use to document need for extension activities and VR staff will use to make a determination about next steps. There are two extension activities available for self-advocacy training, Extension 1 and Extension 2. Extensions are a way to provide additional time and more intensive support to traditional VR customers. They are only to be used if the deliverables are incomplete but are achievable based on the student's performance. Extension Activity 1, up to 5 hours, may be requested by the provider after Course 1 has been completed. This means the course hours and weekly reflection journal entries have been completed and the self-awareness project portfolio has been started. Extension Activity 2, up to 10 hours, may be requested by the provider after course two hours and weekly reflection journal entries have been completed and the deliverables are in progress. This means the professional portfolio and or summative assessment have been started. In the instance of the summative assessment rubric we just reviewed, it is possible for a student to have completed the summative assessment, but there is evidence of significant weakness in regards to the competencies. If the student is capable based on ability, but requires more time and support to demonstrate mastery, then extension activity hours may be requested. It is important to remember extension activities are only available to VR customers, which means star participants may not receive an extension activity. A VR customer may choose to participate in extension activities prior to IPE development as long as they are in secondary or post-secondary education. 
As a reminder, STAR participants may apply to VR at any time during pre-employment transition services if more intensive services or supports are required. Now let's talk about what their responsibilities are to STAR participants and VR customers. Providers are obligated to provide a meaningful experience for individuals in this service. By following the curriculum provided, they can ensure the soundness and quality of the tasks assigned and appropriately guide individuals through the process. Starting with the weekly assignments, providers should assign and collect curriculum worksheets as necessary, assist students in completing weekly reflection journal entries, task students with obtaining relevant assessment results, and support students in developing quality deliverables that will be helpful to them as they transition out of high school. Course deliverables, however, are submitted to VR staff, and these deliverables make up a provider's responsibility to our agency. Course deliverables are due by the end of the course. Providers must submit these deliverables as a part of meeting the service milestones and receiving payment. To ensure the accuracy of these documents, providers must verify all requirements for weekly reflection journal entries have been met, submit the weekly reflection journal or photocopies or clear scans of each entry, submit evidence of projects and or portfolios as photocopies or clear scans, submit completed, scored, summative assessment rubrics, not copies, complete a report at the end of each course documenting what has been completed with photocopies or scans as evidence, what needs completing, and number of hours needed to complete unfinished deliverables. Now let's take a look at what vendors make when they provide the self-advocacy training service. If the VR customer requires a self-advocacy Course 1 extension activity to complete the required Course 1 deliverables, the provider will submit a report to the referring VR staff documenting what has been completed what is left to finish, and extension hours, up to five, required to complete the self-awareness project portfolio. Photocopies or clean scans of what has been completed in the self-awareness project portfolio, as well as the completed weekly reflection journal or photocopies or clean scans of each entry must be submitted with the report. If the VR customer requires a self-advocacy Course 2 extension activity to complete the required Course 2 deliverables, the provider will submit a report to the referring VR staff documenting what has been completed, what is left to finish, and extension hours, up to 10, required to complete the professional portfolio and or summative assessment. Photocopies or clean scans of what has been completed in the professional portfolio, as well as the completed weekly reflection journal, or photocopies or clean scans of each entry and all originally scored summative assessment rubrics must be completed with the report. Now let's discuss how the self-advocacy training service can be added to the STAR referral located on the STAR portal. Please note, school district representatives, SDRs, will not have to go back into STAR and enter self-advocacy training services for students who already have a STAR referral. This will be done by the youth tech who is already working with the STAR participant. However, to enter the service for a new student in STAR, you would follow the same process as you would for the other pre-employment transition services. Let's review this quickly for those of you who may not have had the opportunity to enter any referrals to date. Log in using your username, school email, and password. If you are not sure if you serve in the SDR role, it is likely you haven't been identified by the STAR point of contact as one. If this is the case, please check with your ESE director as most of them serve as the STAR point of contact. Tab 1 is where the STAR referral process begins. It requires that a student social security number be entered which will allow the SDR to verify whether the student already exists in the VR system. Tab 2 allows the SDR to enter necessary student information required, as denoted by the red asterisk. Tab 3 provides contact information for the SDR submitting the STAR referral so we can get in touch with you if there is a question or we need to convey information. 
Tab 4 allows the SDR to select the appropriate accommodations the student may need to speak to the VR Youth Tech at their initial meeting. SDRs use Tab 6, the Star Services tab, to identify the pre-employment transition service the student and or parent guardian are requesting being referred for. Notice that self-advocacy training has been added. Tab 6 allows SDRs to review and, if needed, edit the information they've entered. It also requires the SDR to check off the confirmations box indicating that the SDR is referring a student with a disability as identified by an IEP or 504 plan and that he or she has permission to make the referral by the age of majority student, parent, or guardian. The STAR referral process does not change by adding the self-advocacy training service. It is the same. VR works with dozens of provider types, but not all of them are suited to provide the self-advocacy training service. As discussed earlier, the self-advocacy training curriculum is extremely hands-on and product-driven. To make sure individuals receive a quality experience and benefit from the service, VR has put into place provider requirements. Providers must have an Internal Revenue Service IRS 501c3 not-for-profit designation, register in My Florida Marketplace, submit a W-9 to the Department of Financial Services, and submit an application for pre-employment transition services and employee qualifications if adding a new employment specialist. There is a new application that has been created especially for school districts. The provider of self-advocacy training must be an approved employment services and or supported employment service provider. Staff for school districts can also qualify by having a special education teaching certificate or be a certified educator with certificates or credential for working with youth with disabilities. All applicants must have taken the self-advocacy training, which you are viewing now, and receive a passing score on the post-assessment before they will be approved to offer self-advocacy training service. School district providers who have the appropriate credentials and would like to apply to become an approved self-advocacy training provider should complete the school district pre-employment transition service application and forward it on to vendor registration. Providers will be able to download the application at www.rehabworks.org. Providers who have the appropriate credentials and would like to take the post-assessment to become an approved self-advocacy training provider should contact Employment Programs by emailing vrtransitionyouth at vr.fldoe.org. Once school districts meet all the requirements, they will be enrolled by vendor registration. This slide highlights the staff qualifications page of the school district application. The last three bullets are those added to open this opportunity up to school districts. On this slide, I'd like to draw your attention to the highlighted box at the bottom of the page that discusses background screening. We have been approved to make some provisions for school districts that have not been allowed in the past. What we need is a letter on official letterhead attesting to employees passing of a level two background screening and stating that the individual is a current employee. We are very happy about this as it will open up the doors of opportunity for many more school districts who wish to become VR vendors. Self-advocacy training is a non-contract service, so it uses the paper referral process whether the service is being requested by a VR youth tech or a star participant or VR counselor for a traditional VR customer. Each self-advocacy training service, Course 1, Course 1 Extension, Course 2, and Course 2 Extension is associated with a separate fee code and has its own payment. This table illustrates the number of hours for each part of the service and the associated rate for each service. Remember, each course can have from 10 to 12 students in it. This doesn't mean it can't have less, but should not have any more than 12. The rate is $400 per student. So for course one, assuming there are 10 students in the course, the school district could make $4,000 for the 20 hours and for course two, $5,000 for the 25 hours. 
For the extension activities, there are hours made available to VR customers, which we expect would be provided on an individualized basis to receive extra time or support to complete their deliverables. For five hours of extended time, that is an extra $100 per student. For 10 hours, it is $200 per student. As you are aware, with the increased focus on graduation requirements, there is less time in the school day to work with students with disabilities on important skills such as self-advocacy and self-determination. VR is pleased that we have been named as a state agency by the federal government to offer this as well as other pre-employment transition services with the goal of helping our students transition successfully to adulthood. We have the service. Now we need qualified vendors to provide these services. What better entity than the school districts who have available space after school hours, know the students and families, and already have qualified staff who would love the opportunity to make some additional money? It is a great opportunity and we are pleased to be able to offer this opportunity to you. If you are interested in becoming a VR provider for self-advocacy or any other pre-employment transition service, please complete the School District Pre-Employment Transition Services application and contact Employment Programs if you are interested in taking the post-assessment. That is all it takes. Thank you for completing VR's Self-Advocacy Training Service presentation for School District staff.